Previously on the Club TR Civic build, we had TRE modify and install a shorter ratio gear set for my transmission. We then headed up to Minnesota where Artsum finished up my new cage. Finally, we stopped at RS Motors to refresh my K24A2 head to hopefully bring back some life and maybe some horsepower to this old head. We're going all out this year, all sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. We're headed to ASM with all the parts to get my Civic put back together. But before we can start putting parts back into the car, I have to paint my cage. So we're going to make a stop at Advance to get all the supplies that we'll need. Something really cool about this store is that they not only mix paint so we can get championship white paint, but they also put them in aerosol cans. We're going to go with championship white for the color. I think that's the only color I really makes sense to me because the car is championship white still underneath the vinyl wrap. That way if I ever change the vinyl wrap, you know, I still have a good base underneath of championship white. That's awesome. Huh. We need one of those, Luke. Think we can get one of those? So they've got three different types of tape here. This is obviously the budget one. This one is maximum flexibility, but not quite a sharp paint line. This one's got best paint line but not as much flexibility. So we'll use these on like the straight sections and then these more for the curved sections. We are back here at ASM. Unfortunately, the first step is probably the most tedious and annoying, and that is to paint all of this. Which means we've got to strip down all of the sound deadening um, glue that's been left over. We're gonna get everything in here painted, and it's gonna look nice and fresh when it's done, and it won't rust, because this is just bare metal, and it will rust. So the cage has to be painted at the very least, and if we're gonna paint the cage, we might as well paint everything else in here. Taking out the old seat mount, if I ever need to climb in here or load stuff in here, this is in the way. I think we're gonna flock the dash. Finn wants some suede in his life. I tried to persuade him out of it, but it didn't work. Nice thing about Honda Civic, everything just kind of like clips in. Nothing's really uh, secured well. Oh, easy. In the last episode, I took my transmission to TRE to have them go through it and install shorter gear ratios so I can stay in the power band for longer on track. However, during the disassembly, they found the differential was broken. So I ordered a new OS Gaiken differential and Aaron from TRE drove from Michigan with the differential and transmission to do the final install here at Andy's shop. We're here at Andy's shop, finishing up the transmission. When we were assembling it, we had also found that the uh, front diff had broken and couldn't get one at a time, and we had to wait until this week, and we're gonna finish up the trans today. Here to taking it apart now, so we can start assembling it, finishing it up. Everything's basically done, it just needs to be all glued back together. While Aaron finished the transmission, Andy was prepping the block for my freshly machined head to go back on.
Well, I am trying to do my best at refreshing the engine bay. There's some spots that are just like really dirty from brake fluid leaking and oil leaking and stuff. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll just touch that up real quick, which led to, oh, well, there's some stuff in the way that it's gonna get some overspray on it, which led to, let's remove that stuff to get it out of the way, which led to now, let's tape everything off. And now I see more things that I wanna remove to get out of the way. And it's just a never ending cycle. Ben wanted to go even more crazy and like strip out everything in the engine bay and paint that. So I kind of found that as a great opportunity to clean up some of this wiring that was all tangled and stuff under the dash. Like most projects, you just kind of keep getting piled on top of each other. And then uh, in the end, you just have a freaking mess of wires. I'm going to try to organize the wiring a bit, maybe make some connectors so things just uh, can come out next time a little easier and maybe even get some, get rid of some unneeded wiring. Save some weight. not a show build. This is a race car build. I want it to be all uniform white so I can see leaks and to make it look cleaner. <laughs> but I'm not a professional painter. I'm not going to put the effort into doing it because I don't have the patience for it. It is what it is. Pro tip, any overspray that you get on something that you forgot to tape off, like a latch, you can use some good old lacquer thinner just to wipe it right off. No problem. Just tidied up a little bit of wiring, added some connectors on some things. Just make it pretty much just a little easier for servicing. All right, I'm very tired, but now comes the fun part. We get to paint. I'm gonna start off with this self-etching primer, uh, which should give it a nice good base coat to stick to, a good uniform color, and then it's time for championship white. Here we go, first spray. Don't get the camera dirty, because there's gonna be a lot of overspray. All right, Luke and I went out and got some real masks, and now it's time to paint the interior championship white. Now, I'm still going back and forth on whether I'm gonna clear coat this afterward, but we're gonna start off by just painting it champ white. Hopefully I have enough. I've got like five and a half cans left, I think. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be enough to do the interior. We're gonna find out, and if we need more, we can go to Vance and get some more. Here we go. There goes another one. This is our 2K clear coat. Uh, 2K meaning it's got like two parts. It's kind of like an epoxy. Take this piece off the top. You stick it on the bottom. There it is, okay. All right, so now we've mixed it. And then we shake it up. And this stuff is super toxic, but it should give it a nice good protection layer on top of the paint. And also maybe keep, make it easier to wipe up when there's like dirt and stuff on it. I'm definitely gonna have a lot of scuffs on the door bars getting it into the car. So you're gonna wanna lay this on thick on the door bars. And if it runs, well, it's clear. All right, the paint is officially done and I am one happy boy because that means my job is done and I can hand the keys back to Andy and get in the case swap done. I'm done, Andy. Well, I'm done.
I'm done. Woo! As soon as we finished up with painting the engine bay and the cage, it was time to reinstall everything and put the engine and transmission back in the car. Uh, so these K-Tune shifters, I got the stock version, the street spec version when we first did this K-Swap because I thought I'd be streeting the car. After two years of heavy track abuse, um, the bushing is starting to wear a little bit. So we're gonna replace these with some fresh ones so that I can get rid of any uh, shifter slop that I might have. And we gotta make sure we're getting the best out of that transmission, right? It has been two hours, I think, since this car was a complete bare chassis. And now we're basically ready to drop the engine in. Uh, Andy's working on getting the dash in. All the tape and stuff is removed. All the wiring is put back in only two hours. It's going a lot quicker than it even normally goes because like this car is built to be easy to work on. You know, we, we've been working on it for three years now. So we know where every single one of these bolts goes. Class rules in this class require a full interior unless it's in the way of safety equipment, which is why there's basically nothing in the back of the car because the roll bar goes through where most of the plastics would. We're finding as we're putting pieces back in that they all don't fit up because the bar is intruding on where that space would be. Can't run a glove box. We're also missing the panel under the steering wheel on the other side. It's a minimum weight class anyway. The car has to be 25, 50 pounds with me in the car. So it will weigh the same weight that it did last year. It's just, I'm gonna be missing a lot of interior components. It is what it is. We've got the car on the scales here to weigh it. Now I don't have the front splitter on and I'm not in the car physically yet. Front splitter is about 17 pounds. I'm about 155 pounds. The car weighs 23.70. Let me hop in. I don't have my helmet and stuff either. So it's a little different, but we'll get a close proximization. 25, so with the splitter, it's exactly perfect. I still have to add fuel. I mean, well, it's at half tank, which is about where the end of a session would be. So that's perfect. Yeah, we nailed it. <laughs> All right, now that we know the weight of the car, took the hood back off, go into the dyno, see if it makes any more power. So the baseline that we did in episode one was 230 horsepower, 180 foot-pounds of torque. At the beginning of last season, it made 253 horsepower. I can't remember the torque, uh, but that was its peak. If it makes over that, it'd be awesome. Um, I don't know if I expect it to make over 253, but anywhere between 230 and 253, we're no, we know we're pretty much the same as last year. Ideally, I'd like to be closer to that 253 mark, or maybe more. Less power with more timing. Dude, whoever tuned this before like did a perfect job because I can't I can't make it anymore. I mean, you picked up some some power all down here. Top's kind of the same. So, I mean, there's more. definitely a little bit of gain there. 
Yeah, torque could be part partially the gear. I don't know how the gear change plays a, in effects to torque. It's a, it's a torque multiplier. So if the gears change, it's hard to compare exact. I had my whole um, dyno kind of recalibrated, had them upgrade the firmware, all that stuff, kind of like their first, their, their big service interval. So, I mean, maybe there are little differences there. I really don't want to compare the, the 250 that we had before. I, I kind of think that was like an anomaly or something. That was, <laughs> I don't know how it made that much. I don't know. Everything has like perfect conditions and dyno was reading high that day. Air temp was good. Oxygen levels in the air were good. <laughs> uh, so 235 is the new normal, right? Yeah, 235, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, sounds, it's pretty healthy. You know, we're chasing like, it's hard to chase one or two horsepower, right? right. Like, yeah. there's too many variables there to really, um, you know, did we actually make more power than when we came in? It's five horse. Well, five. Yeah. There's, there's too many variables between the beginning of last season and right. when we came in too. So, I mean. Yep. Whole new trans now. A um, few engine changes, but I mean, there's, yeah, like, there's too many variables. Right. So peak power band is at 7,000 RPM with the shorter gearing. I should be able to ride that power band a little bit better than I did should. last season. Mm -hmm. So, yep. yeah. Mile well, an hour should be higher. Only thing that matters is lap times, right? That's Who cares right. about what the dyno says? That's true. <laughs> it's true. We'll see what the lap times say. Yep. All right. Well, one more thing to help with those lap times. Yeah. These are some new Titan 7 R8 wheels, which are the same design as my old setup. Uh, just not bronze, these are a satin titanium. Should match the livery colors a little bit better, but most importantly, you'll notice it's wider. These are a 10 inch wheel, while as my old ones were a nine inch wheel, um, which is already pretty ridiculous, but with a 255 tire, I should actually have more contact patch on a 10 inch than I will on a nine inch. So this should give me more front end grip, a little bit more rotational mass, but it should be worth it for the grip. We've seen it proven ever so slightly. I'm talking tenths of a second, just a little bit more uh, lap time, but I'm fighting tenths. Once again, we have done so much refinement to the Civic in the off season. We netted five horsepower, welded in an eight point cage, installed shorter gears, and put on some wider wheels. All of these little changes should put down some faster lap times this season. The Civic has come so far from where it was in street class just two seasons ago. I can't wait to hit the track and kick some. Next time on Gears and Gasoline, we've done all the mods, we've put in all the work. Finally, it's time to see if all the time, money, and effort was worth it. In the conclusion to the first chapter of the Evo Build series, we finally see how fast the Evo can go at the racetrack.